All right, last example, number six. What we want to do is we want to find the surface integral of x squared plus y squared plus z squared ds. If s is the cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals nine, and the cylinder goes from, looks like a height of zero to two, including the top and the bottom. Um, so we're basically gonna need to do three separate surface integrals. We need to do the top one, we need to do the bottom one, and then we need to do the lateral face. So we're gonna set this up as three separate ones. <clears throat> Let's see if we can kind of split our page here. Into three sections. So we're going to have surface integral number one, surface integral number two, and surface integral number three. <clears throat> All right, so let's call surface integral for the first one. Let's call that the full, um, the, t uh, the bottom disk. So that's going to be the bottom the bottom disk. Um, okay, so if we're going to parameterize the bottom disk, it is just a disk, and um, I guess I probably should have sketched this, but hopefully you guys know what a cylinder between 0 and 2 look like. So we're going to talk about just the bottom part. Well, z is 0 there, and we know that um, a disk it needs to be the entire thing, so r needs to vary, r needs to be a variable. So I would assume that polar would probably be the easiest way to do this thing. So we're going to say that x is going to be r cosine of theta, y is going to be r sine of theta, and we know z is just a constant. It's at the bottom. It's zero. So that's our bottom disk. And we know that um, theta needs to go from zero to two pi. And r, let's see, r, the cylinder has a radius of, of 3, it looks like. So r is going to go from 0 to 3. All right, so let's go ahead and um, set this up. So r of r and theta is going to be r cosine theta, r sine theta, 0. <clears throat> so let's do r sub r. That's just going to be cosine theta, sine theta, 0. r sub theta is going to be negative r sine theta, r cosine theta, 0. The cross product here is actually going to be really nice because both of the j components are 0. So r sub r cross r sub theta. If I eliminate the i row and column, I'm going to get 0 minus 0, so that's 0. If I eliminate the j row and column, once again, I get 0 minus 0, which is 0. So really, the only thing that gives us anything is the, um, uh, the k part. And that's going to be r cosine squared minus minus or, or plus r sine squared. Well, r cosine squared plus r sine squared is just going to be r. We've done that enough times. Hopefully, that's not something um, that's going to trip you up. So that just means that the magnitude, which is even nicer, is the square root of 0 plus 0 plus r squared. So the square root of r squared is just r. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do the integration here, and then we'll go back up and do s two. So the integration. So let's see. This is with respect to r and theta. So theta we already said goes from zero to two pi. R goes from zero to three. The function was scroll back up here. What are we taking this of? X squared plus y squared plus z squared. But since we did this in terms of polar x squared plus y squared is r squared. So we're going to have r squared. And in this case, z is 0. So plus 0 squared is just 0. So we're going to get r squared plus 0. And then don't forget to multiply it by r, because that was our cross product, dr d theta. OK, let's go ahead and finish this one off. This one should be pretty quick. So we can split this up because the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta times the integral of 0 to 3 of r cubed dr. This should be very simple. That's going to be 2 pi. Antiderivative is 1 fourth r to the fourth 
from 0 to 3. So let's see, 3 to the fourth power is 81. So we're going to get 2 pi times 81 fourths minus 0. So it looks like we're going to get 162 pi fourths. Um, that'll reduce. Both things are divisible by 2. So 81 pi halves. 81 pi halves. Okay, that's the top disk. Now the, the um, I'm going to go ahead and extend these dotted lines just a little bit more. <clears throat> Alright, so again, that one, I'm sorry if I said top, I meant bottom. That's the bottom disk. So the top disk really is going to be almost identical. Alright, so x is going to be r cosine theta. Y is going to be R sine theta. The only difference here is now Z has a value of 2. Right? Z's height is 2. Everything else about this is going to be identical <clears throat> as far as the, um, um, the R sub R and the R um, sub theta. So I'm not going to rewrite that, but all of this, all of this right here is exactly the same. Okay, that's going to be the same. And if you don't believe me, you can plug it in. The only thing that changes is you have a 2 where the 0 was, but every time you take the derivative of that, you still get 0. So it gives you the cross product. So I should probably actually shorten this just a little bit. So this right here, oops, yeah, let's just go ahead and redraw that. So this right here is all the same. This part right here, the only difference is that's now a 2. <clears throat> from this side. But again, it gives the same derivatives, same cross product, same everything else. So now what we have to do is plug it in. Let's see, we're going to get an integral from 0 to 2 pi. Still integral from 0 to 3. Only difference is now this is not r squared plus 0, it's r squared plus, um, what was z2? So 2 squared, so it's plus 4 r dr d theta. All right, so let's go ahead and finish off the integral for this piece. So we are going to have to distribute the r through there. We're still going to get an integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta. That doesn't change. Here we're going to get the integral from 0 to 3 of r cubed plus 4r dr. So that will give us a different value there. So we still get 2 pi out here. Here we're going to get 1 fourth r to the fourth plus um, r squared, so 2r squared from 0 to 3. So we get 2 pi times, let's see, plugging in 3, 81 fourths, plus, let's see, 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. Plugging in 0 gives me nothing. So it looks like right here we're going to get, uh, what is that again, it's 162 over 4, so that's 81 pi over 2 plus 36 pi, putting everything in terms of halves, that's going to be, oh, what is that, um, 81 pi halves plus 72 pi halves, so 81 pi plus 72 pi over 2. So that's going to be, what is that, uh, 153 pi over 2, 153 pi over 2. So that's from the top and the bottom. Again, not terribly difficult, just a little bit of time that takes to get there. All right, so let's go to the lateral face now. So the lateral face, the lateral face of this thing, now remember, we just want the outside of the cylinder. We don't want all the guts. So in this case, the radius is constant. The radius is 3. So I know that x is going to be 3 cosine theta. y is going to be 3 sine theta. And z, well, I don't have a second variable here, so we can just call z, z. Now we're down from x, y's, and z's to theta's and z's. So let's see, let's define, um, let's see, theta has to go from 0 to 2 pi. And in this case, z, it goes from 0 to 2. That's defined above for us, so 0, 
is less than or equal to z is less than or equal to 2. Alright, so our r, this time it's going to be r of theta and z, which is going to be 3 cosine theta, 3 sine theta, z. <coughs> All right, so let's take r sub theta. The derivative of r with respect to theta is going to be negative 3 sine theta, 3 cosine theta, 0. And the derivative of r with respect to z is going to be 0, 0, 1. All right, let's do the cross. r of theta cross r sub z. So eliminating the i row and column is going to give us 3 cosine theta. Eliminating the j row and column is going to give us negative 3 sine theta, but that actually becomes positive because it's the middle one. And then eliminating the um, k row and column is going to give us 0 minus 0. It's nothing. So the magnitude is going to be the square root of 9 cosine squared plus 9 sine squared, which is just going to be the square root of 9, or 3. Okay, I didn't write all that down, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to you'll be able to figure that out. All right, so we've got everything we need to plug into now. So let's see. x squared plus y squared is going to be in our integral, so we're going to have an integral from um, what do we got here? Theta. So we got 0 to 2 pi, and z, which is 0 to 2 x squared plus y squared is going to be 9 cosine plus 9 sine squared. So it's going to be 9 plus z squared. Okay, and that's just, again, that's plugging the x, y, and z back into the original function that we're taking the integral of. And then don't forget to multiply it by your cross, which is 3. And then, let's see, we went z and then theta. So it looks like, once again, we can separate this. So we've got an integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta times an integral from 0 to 2, distributing the 3 through if we want to. We don't really have to, but we're going to get 27 plus 3z squared. Probably could have just left the 3 on the outside. Doesn't make any difference. Let's see. The first one is 2 pi once again. And then we're going to get the integral of 27 is 27z plus um, z cubed from 0 to 2. So we'll get 2 pi, plugging a 2 in, we get 54 plus 27, plugging 0 in gives us nothing. So let's see, 54 and um, 54 and 27. What did I do wrong there? What did I do wrong? Oh my gosh. 2 cubed is not 27. Didn't I knew that didn't seem right. 2 cubed is only 8. Boy, that would have been way off. All right, so 54 plus 8 is 62 times 2 is 124 pi. And then so the total surface integral is the sum of all those. So let's see what we get. Um, 81 plus 153, this is nice, it's going to be even, um, is 200 and what is that? 234 pi. So we get, let's do it in purple. So we get 234 pi over 2 plus 124 pi from the last one. 234 pi over 2 is going to be, um, geez, what is that? Um, 117, 117 pi plus 124 pi, so that should give us 100, no, 241 pi. Okay, I hope I did all that correctly. It looks right. Um, so there is your surface integral for, um, for that cylinder, including the top and the bottom.